Take a look at these two photos. They were shot in the same exact place at the same exact time, but they look different. To capture the image on the left, I use a slower shutter speed, which creates a motion blur effect. And on the right, I use a faster shutter speed, which creates a freeze frame effect. If you're new here, my name is Nate Torres. I'm a photographer, photography author, and speaker, and I provide tips and news for the modern day photographer. So with that being said, let's learn about shutter speed. Shutter speed, sometimes referred to as exposure time, is the duration of time that a camera's sensor or film is exposed to light while taking a photograph. It is one of the three fundamental elements of exposure in photography along with aperture and ISO. These three elements make up what's known as the exposure triangle. A faster shutter speed results in a shorter exposure time, freezing fast moving subjects and reducing motion blur. A slower shutter speed results in a longer exposure time, allowing for the capture of motion and potentially introducing intentional blur for creative effects. Shutter speed is typically measured in fractions of a second, like 1 1,000th of a second, 1 250th of a second, 1 60th of a second, etc. It can also be measured in whole seconds for longer exposures, such as 2 seconds, 30 seconds, and so on. In summary, shutter speed is a critical component of exposure and a powerful creative tool that allows us photographers to control motion, capture details, and express your artistic vision. When it comes to photography and choosing the right exposure settings, there are lots of variables to take into account. With that being said, here are my 10 tips and questions you can ask yourself in order to choose the best shutter speed for your specific setting. The first question is, what's my subject? Is it in motion or is it static? When considering this question, you're essentially assessing whether the main focus and subject of your photo is something that's moving or something that's stationary. If your subject is in motion, such as a running athlete, a flying bird, or a car on the road, you'll need to use a shutter speed that's fast enough to capture the action. This means selecting a quicker shutter speed, such as 1 500th of a second or faster, to capture the subject sharply without any blur. A fast shutter speed will help you capture the subject at a specific moment, allowing you to emphasize the movement of the subject. For example, since cars are in motion, I can either choose to freeze their motion with a fast shutter speed, or create a motion blur effect with a slower shutter speed. On the other hand, if your subject is static, like a landscape, a building, or of a portrait of a person posing, you have more flexibility in choosing your shutter speed. You can opt for slower shutter speeds such as 1 30th of a second or slower without worrying about motion blur, as long as you're using a tripod or stabilizing your camera. A slower shutter speed in this case allows more light to enter your camera and can result in a um, well-exposed image with more details. For example, if I wanted to photograph this building, since it's a static subject, I can get away with using a slower shutter speed but make sure to use a tripod, a stabilized surface, or have a stabilized photography stance. For example, in this image, I used a tripod in order to be able to shoot with a very slow shutter speed. And as you can see, the subject in motion has that motion blur effect because the shutter speed is slow while the building is still in sharp focus because it is a static subject. The second question is, do you want to freeze the motion or capture motion blur? The decision between freezing motion and capturing motion blur is a crucial creative choice in photography. It revolves around how you want to portray movement in your images. When you want to freeze motion, you use a fast shutter speed. This means the camera shutter opens and closes very quickly, allowing you to capture a split second moment in sharp detail. This technique is great for capturing fast moving subjects like sports, action shots, or anything that you want to show in a frozen dynamic state. For example, in this image by Robert Sprague, he uses a very fast shutter speed of 1 64th hundredth of a second in order to capture a freeze frame look of the jet boat. If you're aiming to convey a sense of movement or dynamism in your photo, you'll intentionally use a slower shutter speed. With a slow shutter speed, the camera sensor remains exposed to light for a longer duration, allowing moving elements in the scene to create streaks or blurs across your image. This technique is often used in scenarios like waterfalls, car headlights at night, or a person walking. The resulting blur can add a sense of energy and motion to the photograph, making it more visually interesting and conveying the passage of time. For example, going back to this image, I used a slow shutter speed of 1 15th of a second because I wanted to capture a, um, an effect that the cars were moving really fast even though they were probably going only about 20 miles per hour at the time. So as you can see, a motion blur effect really adds that dynamic and fast moving effect in your photos. The third question is, how much light is available? Is the scene well lit or is it low lit? Understanding the available light in a scene is fundamental in photography. The amount of light available directly impacts how you'll set your camera settings, including your shutter speed. In a well lit scene, there's an abundance of natural or artificial light. This could be daylight flooding through a window, bright outdoor sunlight, or a well-lit room. 
In such situations, you have the flexibility to use a faster shutter speed without worrying too much about the image being too dark. This is because the ample light allows your camera sensor to capture a well-exposed image even with a faster shutter speed. For example, in this image I shot with one of my clients, it was a bright outdoor sunny day and I needed to use a shutter speed that was uh, faster than usual in order to expose the image properly. I already, as you can see, the aperture was f2.5, so it was already wide open as much as possible that I wanted it in order to blur the background. The ISO was already 100, and so I needed to use a shutter speed faster in order to um, allow less light to hit the camera sensor. And even I could have used even a faster shutter speed in order to get the image to look a little bit darker. When a scene is low light, it means there's not enough light available for the camera to capture a well-exposed image with a quick shutter speed. This often happens indoors, at night, or in a situation with just poor lighting conditions. To compensate for this, you have a few options. The first thing you can do is open up your aperture. You can open up the camera's aperture, which is having a lower f-stop number, to allow more light to reach your sensor. The second thing you can do is use a slower shutter speed. You can use a slower shutter speed, allowing your camera sensor to gather more light over a longer duration. The third thing you can do is increase your ISO. You can raise the ISO setting, which makes the sensor more sensitive to light, but it may introduce noise or graininess in the image. For example, if we look at these two images, they were both shot in low light, but they have different shutter speed effects. The image on the left has a motion blur effect due to a slower shutter speed, and the image on the right has a fast freeze frame effect due to a faster shutter speed. If we take a look closer at the image on the left, as you can see, I used a shutter speed of 1 4th, which is very slow to capture the, that motion blur effect. And so since I was getting more light hitting the sensor due to a slower shutter speed, I um, had to use a lower ISO sensitivity number and an aperture that was a bit more narrow in order to capture a um, well-exposed image that wasn't too overexposed. If we take a look at the image on the right, since I went with the freeze frame effect with a faster shutter speed, well, this means less light is hitting the camera sensor, so I needed to use an aperture that was more wide open, and also I used an ISO um, that was a lot higher, which is ISO 6400, in order to allow the camera sensor to be more uh, sensitive to light. So as you can see, this is just an example of how to, um, based on your shutter speed, you'll need to balance out the other settings when you're in low light situations. The fourth question you should ask yourself is, are you using a tripod or are you photographing handheld? The choice between using a tripod or holding the camera by hand has a significant impact on the sharpness and clarity of your photographs. A tripod is a stable support for your camera. When you use a tripod, you eliminate the risk of camera shake caused by your hands trembling. This is especially important when you're using slower shutter speeds to capture low light scenes, or when you want to achieve certain effects like long exposure shots of a waterfall, for example. With a tripod, you can use longer shutter speeds without introducing unwanted blur into your images. Holding the camera by hand gives you more flexibility and mobility, but it also introduces the potential for camera shake. When shooting handheld, the natural movement of your body can result in slight vibrations that, at slower shutter speeds, can lead to blurry images. The fifth question is, what's your focal length? Understanding the concept of focal length and the reciprocal rule is important when determining the right shutter speed for your shot. Focal length refers to the distance between the camera's lens and the image sensor when the lens is focused at infinity. It determines the field of view and magnification of your images. Lenses with shorter focal lengths, such as wide-angle lenses, capture a wider scene, while lenses with longer focal lengths, such as telephoto lenses, often capture uh, distant subjects closer. The reciprocal rule is a guideline for selecting an appropriate shutter speed based on the focal length of your lens. This rule suggests that your shutter speed should be at least the reciprocal of the focal length to minimize camera shake. For example, if you're using a 50mm lens, then the reciprocal of that would be 1 over 50. So in this case, you'd aim to use a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second or faster to reduce the chances of blur from camera movement while shooting handheld. And for me personally, I like to use two times the focal length. So for example, if I'm shooting with a 50mm lens, then I like to have my shutter speed set to at least 1 100th of a second. The reason for this rule is that longer focal lengths magnify the effects of camera shake. So a longer lens, uh, which has a higher focal length, requires a faster shutter speed to compensate for potential blur caused by small movements during handheld shooting. The sixth question is, are you capturing a still life, landscape, action, or low light image? The type of scene you're capturing plays a significant role in determining the appropriate shutter speed you should be using. Different types of scenes and subjects require different shutter speed settings to achieve the desired outcome. 
When capturing still life subjects, such as objects on a table or arrangements in a studio, you generally have more control over the environment. This allows you to use longer shutter speeds without worrying much about motion blur. You can take advantage of a tripod and use slower shutter speeds to capture more light and detail in your image. Landscape photography often involves capturing stationary scenes like mountains, seascapes, or forests. Here you have the flexibility to use slower shutter speeds, especially if you're using a tripod. Slower shutter speeds can help you capture the overall scene with more depth and detail, and as long as there are no moving elements like trees swaying in the wind. When photographing action scenes such as sports or fast moving subjects, you'll need faster shutter speeds to freeze the motion. In low light situations such as indoor settings or night photography, you'll need to balance the desire for a well exposed image with the risk of introducing camera shake. You might need to use slower shutter speeds, but using a tripod or image stabilization is essential to avoid blurriness. Additionally, you can use wider apertures and higher ISO settings to gather more light. The seventh question is, do you want to emphasize or minimize background details? This question is crucial in determining the right shutter speed to use because it's tied directly to the choice of aperture and the resulting depth of field in the photograph. Aperture refers to the size of the opening in the camera lens through which light enters, and it's measured in f-stops. A smaller f-stop number, such as f1.8, indicates a larger aperture opening, while a larger f-stop number, such as f16, indicates a smaller aperture opening. The aperture setting directly affects the depth of field, which is the area of the image that appears sharp and in focus. If you want to showcase the background details along with the subject, you choose a smaller aperture, which is a higher f-stop number. This creates a deep depth of field where both the subject and the background are in focus. To achieve a proper exposure with a smaller aperture, you need more light, which often requires a slower shutter speed. Conversely, if you aim to separate the subject from the background and create a pleasing blur or a bokeh effect in the background, you'd opt for a larger aperture, which is a lower f-stop number. This would result in a shallow depth of field and with the subject sharp and the background blurred. So to avoid overexposing the image due to the larger aperture allowing more light in, you might need to use a faster shutter speed to limit the amount of light hitting the sensor. And this all ties back in again to just knowing the exposure triangle and how the three elements of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO all work together to balance out the exposure in your image. If you take a look at these two images, um, they're of the same plant uh, with the focal point on the center leaf. The image on the left has a more narrow aperture, so a uh, larger depth of field that I captured with aperture of f10. So since it's a more narrow aperture, less light's hitting the camera sensor, so I needed to use a slower shutter speed of 1 over 50. And I also had to use a higher ISO because it was a pretty low light environment. But as you can see, there's also a little noise introduced into the image. With the image on the right, I used a wider aperture, which is a smaller f-stop number of f2.8 in order to capture that background blur. So only that center leaf that I focused on uh, is the one in sharp focus while the other background leaves are blurred. Uh, but because of this, because more light was hitting the sensor, I was able to use a faster shutter speed of 1 320th and um, a lower ISO number as well. And it, even in this image, I probably could have used a faster shutter speed, but that's just an example of, you know, more light, you can use a faster shutter speed. The eighth question is, are you shooting indoors or outdoors? This question is pivotal when determining the right shutter speed because it directly affects the available light and lighting conditions, which in turn impact your exposure settings, including your shutter speed. Indoor environments typically have lower light levels compared to outdoors. This is especially true when shooting in spaces with limited natural light or dim artificial lighting. In low light indoor scenarios, achieving a proper exposure often requires longer shutter speeds to allow enough light to reach your camera sensor. So you might need to use a tripod, increase your ISO, or open up your aperture to gather more light without sacrificing sharpness. Outdoor settings generally provide more abundant natural light. Depending on the weather, time of day, and other factors, you might have various lighting conditions ranging from bright sunlight to overcast skies. In well-lit outdoor scenes, you have the flexibility to use uh, faster shutter speeds without compromising exposure. The ninth question is, are you using any external lighting? If you're using external lighting sources like studio lights or continuous lighting, you have more control over the light intensity and the direction. This allows you to adjust your shutter speed based on the amount of light provided by these sources. Flash photography introduces an additional burst of light that illuminates the scene. The flash duration is very brief, so you can use faster shutter speeds without worrying about motion blur caused by the flash itself. For example, using a shutter speed with a speed light involves a combination of settings and techniques to balance ambient light with the light from the flash. And while this can be discussed in a whole separate video, you'll need to know certain terms such as flash sync speed, which is the fastest shutter speed you can use while ensuring the entire frame is exposed evenly, 
and high speed sync, which allows you to use the shutter speed faster than your camera sync speed while using flash. The 10th question is how important is capturing fine details in your scene? As I've been touching on in this video, when you're shooting a scene, the shutter speed determines how long the camera sensor is exposed to light. If the shutter is open for a longer duration, any movement, whether from the subject, the camera, or both can result in motion blur. This blur can cause fine details in your image to become smudged or indistinct, uh, reducing the overall quality and sharpness of your photo. In situations where capturing fine details is crucial, such as in macro photography, architectural photography, or capturing intricate textures using a higher shutter speed becomes essential. For example, if you're photographing a flower close up and you want to capture the delicate texture of its petals, using a higher shutter speed will help prevent the subtle swaying of the flower due to wind or even your own hand movements from introducing blur. Here's an example showcasing what I just mentioned. Uh, this is a flower uh, that I took. It's the same exact flower, uh, both on the left and the right. So the image on the left, I use a faster shutter speed of 1 over 3200. And the image on the right, or the, the shot I took on the right, is using a slower shutter speed of 1 over 100. As you can see, the image on the left is a lot more sharp, especially when you take a look at the center portion of the flower. You can just see the details a lot more uh, compared to the image on the right. So that's just an example of if you really want to capture the fine details, if you're like a macro photographer or anything like that, and um, you don't have a tripod or you just don't want to risk um, getting any blur within the image, it's better to use a faster shutter speed. And again, as mentioned, especially if you're shooting handheld. And those are the 10 questions you should ask yourself in order to pick the best shutter speed based on your photography setting and subject. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you found it helpful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more photography tips and news. Thanks for watching.